My name is Brendan Ritchie, and I am doing a little something I'm calling AI Focus. While in town, that town being Orlando, Florida, for the IT Nation Connect Global Conference, I'm catching up with a whole bunch of industry experts to talk about all things AI. You're going to learn about the tools they use and the coolest things they've done with them and where they think this AI revolution is going. Let's jump into it. Let's start off with who you are and what you do. So I think at this point, you are unable to separate your business from you. Because I said, who are you and what do you do? And you're like, I am Scalepad. Where do you do this? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm chief evangelist here at Scalepad. Nice. Uh, the way I like describing my role is uh, I'm in love with the problem, not with the solution. Okay. And so I spend a lot of time understanding what uh, challenges MSPs day to day and helping them understand how to make progress, around, especially around things like customer success and bettering the account management or BCIO practices inside their business and how to engage and elevate conversation with customers better. Nice, okay. Uh, what is your favorite AI tool? And tell me something you've done with it that's really cool and people would be like, oh damn, that's great. Yeah, we I, we use ChatGPT at Scalepad. Same. So I use ChatGPT on a daily basis uh, nowadays. Uh, I'd say I can continue surprising myself with the things I can go and ask ChatGPT to help me with that I didn't think it could help me with. Got an example? Um, simple like framework exploration. Uh, a lot of what I do is like thinking in frameworks and, and systems to help MSPs work through some of these challenges. And sometimes I hear ideas or things from other markets or other industries. For example, I might see a commercial on TV about uh, a soap company and they, they made a mention of something I was like, oh, can you take this idea and kind of transplant it into the MSP industry? And sometimes uh, I get some good. interesting like okay. framework exploration this way. I like that. That's really good. Hey, I really like this thing I saw. Assuming it was for my product, what would that look like? Same concept. Yeah. I'm going to steal that. Thanks. But here's another one that I use quite often, and it's uh, using the agent's functionality in ChatGPT or uh, the, the scheduled runs. I have it every day go look for interesting topics or things that are happening in specific areas like customer success or MSP news or mm. things that are worthwhile for me to stay on top of. And it just every day it gives me a cool little report in a bullet point format of things that I should look at and gives me all the sources of that. And so it kind of keeps me tuned in and plugged into things that are happening in the industry. That bullet point uh, thing's interesting. Do you think we're reading less because we can now take a really complex book or paper and go give me that in 10 bullet points? Uh, like do you yourself find that you're still reading long form stuff and going through everything or is everything just now just tell me what I need to know. There's certainly a risk of that. And I mm. think, you know, we've been hearing the term work slop a lot mm. lately, which, which I think a lot of people may get a little lazier in terms of the, the depth of the work that they're doing. But what I find is just little triggers and ideas. It's, it's unblockers. You know, people, I have a lot of writing that I do in, in my role. And so sometimes just unlocking a bit of that writer's block to get yeah. started with an idea is, is a great way to use AI for me. I agree with that 100%. Like, just give me 10 great opening phrases for this thing just to get me going. Exactly. Like, okay, great. Okay, so we've touched on it a little bit there, but I'd be keen to, to see if we can explore it a bit further. We've had three years of ChatGPT kind of being a thing. What have you, what have you really liked about this period of, of omnipresent AI and what would you say you're kind of less of a fan of? I think uh, for me in my role, it's quite practical. And so I, I try to espouse a little bit of the practicality of it. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people are maybe overthinking how much they want to try and achieve with AI uh, as a starting point. But I think just being able to, to, on the light surface, explore a little bit of its capabilities I think that unlocks some of our thinking in terms of, oh, maybe it can also do this. And it's a kind of a mindset of like, I wonder if AI can help me solve this problem as opposed to, you know, you never thought it could help you with that at all in the past. Yeah. So I think that little mindset unlock is really interesting. What do you guys do at Scalepad in terms of, you said uh, ChatGPT is the, the, the platform of choice. Uh, have you rolled out to all staff? Is this some staff that get it? How does that work? Yeah, any staff member that wants to use it is able to use it. Um, you know, our sales team might use it to, to tune up some of their uh, outreach emails or the marketing yeah. team helps get some of the first drafts of some of the stuff on the copy of marketing campaigns or the website done. Uh, and some of the folks like myself who are constantly writing decks or presentation materials, it just helps us think in frameworks, which I think is really powerful. Have you found a good way to nail PowerPoints at this point or do PowerPoints sound like a matter? So PowerPoints, uh, we're actually using a really cool tool called Gamma. I know Gamma. Uh, yep. So Gamma has been great Gamma's because good. 
Um, once you sort of feed it the right kind of data. The brand guide, for example, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And ChatGPT is actually great because with a really good prompt, you can have it give you the prompt for Gamma. And so it knows how to structure uh, the data for Gamma specifically to do a better job. I love that. Because that's the biggest issue with Gamma. It can be quite complex, I think, what you can do with it. Once you get it right, it's pretty bloody good. But that's smart. I'm going to steal that too. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, last thing I'd say, if you've got any thoughts on it, is just one of, one of the biggest blockers to, to true, um, truly unlocking the, the potential of a lot of the AI apps is people don't know what it can do. I've had probably three or four conversations today, including I didn't know Grok was just available in the Tesla. I got a Tesla, didn't know. Uh, the camera function on the advanced audio thing with ChatGPT going, what do you see? And it tells you and gets you to, you can talk that through with you. I literally just found out about that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm also the guy who on Slack didn't realize the quick catch up feature was there until very recently. So do you think, like, how do you think people can get upskilled and, and truly kind of get their head around what they can do with the things they now have access to? Well, I think more and more apps are feeling the pressure from the industry and the consumers in general to just deliver some kind of AI into their tools. And what may have been perhaps a marketing checkbox in the, in the beginning of their AI journey is starting to become a little bit more practical and deep in their actual application. And so I think it's just going to show up for more people in more places that they are just in all the time. The daily apps that they use, the little things that they interact with. And so it's just going to kind of naturally start to flow. And I think for individual people, the AI fluency, I think, is a big deal. Yeah. Like just not ignoring it and just uh, just being curious about it and understanding what it can do for them in their specific situations. I'll give you a great example. I spent some time with my mom in the summer. I love my mom. But she asks all these interesting questions about things that she's wondering about. She's like, I wonder what tree that is, or I wonder what bird that is. And so I thought, well, you know, here's ChatGPT on your phone, take a picture of it and ask it what bird it is. And so it started giving her all this great information that she's like, oh, now she's off with her phone taking pictures of trees and birds. And so like there are these interesting, like silly applications, but it starts generating a bit of this AI fluency yeah. and just a thought process around the possibility of things that can, are you know, easily solved with AI. And so I think that's the, the unlock for consumers. It's funny that such a curious person wouldn't be curious about the opportunity to solve it, but it's an age thing, I think, and the lack of, there's just a blocker there for some reason with the yeah. technology. Well, I, you know, maybe it's a sort of the, the mom-son relationship of just asking questions for the sake of asking uh, yeah, questions, sure. but, you know, creating conversation, what have you. But when I don't have the answers, I feel frustrated as, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Dr. Becky Good, uh, a well-known psychologist that teaches resilience, talks about this. Smart people are particularly frustrated when they can't get from A to B very quickly. And so in that middle of building resilience or building knowledge or expertise, it it's can be really frustrating. That was a good way of saying you're smart. I like that. Well uh, yeah, well... <laughs> I think most most of us in this industry like to think we're smart. So fair, I suppose that's true. Yeah. Probably wouldn't be here if we weren't. Hey, yeah. All right, cool. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for the partnership. Thanks, man. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you want to see more just like that from this series, you can find them on our LinkedIn company page or on our company YouTube page. I also just want to say a big thank you to the team at ConnectWise and IT Nation for having us involved.